Tan, one of the oldest districts in the city of Zanzibar. East Africa's oldest town that is still inhabited today. It's one of the most impressive historical treasures of the island of Zanzibar. The city is dominated by many old buildings. Although several of the buildings have been restored, newly decorated facades are few and far between. Over the years, little has changed here. In addition to beautiful windows, it's the city's richly decorated doors that have become a unique feature of Zanzibar's architecture. The colourful spirit of the city can be experienced in the many labyrinth-like markets that bring Stone Town to life. The chaos, excitement and hectic pace of the fruit and vegetable markets is a real feast to the senses. Close to Darajani Market is Stonetown's Anglican Church, the Church of Christ. British missionaries built this house of God on historic ground. Up until the end of the 19th century, Zanzibar's central slave market was held on the site of today's Anglican Church. Seven years after the official prohibition of slavery in 1873, the church was completed. Today, a fascinating group of sculptures recalls this dark and cruel chapter of the island's history. The privations of the slave trade were carried out for several centuries a highly profitable business that was controlled by the Arabian upper classes. A time now relegated to the history books. Small boats lie at anchor. The country's traditional dhows are mainly used for commercial fishing. In the north of the old town is one of Zanzibar's most beautiful buildings. An old pharmacy that has been fully restored, the Ismaili Dispensarium. Following the bloody downfall of the Sultanate, the island's new socialist government allowed its buildings to decay. The importance of these old buildings has now been fully recognized and due to the assistance of foreign investment, a large number of buildings have been restored to their former glory. However, the house that once belonged to Zanzibar's biggest slave trader, Tipu Tip, has been left to the ravages of time. Stone Town's small but beautiful beaches are well worth a visit. The beach promenade is close to the Arab fort that was built during the rule of the island's Arab rulers. In the middle of the 17th century, Zanzibar was ruled by the Arabian Imam of Oman. It was also occupied for many years by the Portuguese. In 
Its massive fortress was also used as a prison. Public executions took place outside its walls until 1890. Today the Arab fort has a more welcoming atmosphere. It is Zanzibar's center of culture. Following the revolution of 1964, the Sultan's palace was also transformed and today it is the People's Palace and is open to the public. It contains a museum that provides a fascinating insight into the opulent lifestyle of the Sultan's court. Its splendid furnishings extend across three floors and each of the palace's important rooms are on public view. One of the palace's most famous female occupants was Emily Ruita. She gave up her privileged life as a sultan's daughter for the love of a German merchant. At the end of the 19th century, the publication of her memoirs created quite a sensation. The former residence of the Sultan of Zanzibar was also of technical note, as it was the first building on the island to have its own water supply. The unique historic ambience of the Palace Museum invokes a strong feeling of nostalgia. The tranquil palace gardens contain the graves of Sultan Said and his sons. A tall tower indicates the presence of another of the Sultan's buildings, the House of Miracles, the Bet El Ajaib, a huge city palace that is adorned with several splendid columns. This building is now the National Museum and contains various objects that relate to the history, nature and culture of the East African coast. The impressive architecture of the Sultan's Palace draws a lot of visitors to this area. Local beaches are in charming and picturesque contrast to the many cultural and historic features of this extraordinary old city. Stone Town days usually come to their most beautiful climax when the fishing boats return to the harbour and the setting sun fills the sky with a kaleidoscopic array of magnificent colours.